Today we're going to be looking at what we call a cladogram. And a cladogram is really just a image or a diagram that shows us an evolutionary relationship between different organisms. So what I have here is I have a cladogram and this cladogram shows um, some different creatures here. It shows uh, sharks, it shows the ray fin fishes which are uh, you know, your bony fishes, a lot of fishes that you're familiar with. It shows the amphibians. It shows the primates, which is the group that man would fall into. Uh, rodents, like rabbits and mice. Uh, and then it shows the crocodilians and the birds. Now, a few features of cladograms. Up at the top, you will always have um, the different organisms that you're looking at. And you'll have the names of those organisms, as you can see. Um, and then you will have along the side of the cladogram, you will usually have different characteristics. And these characteristics are what separate the various organisms from one another. For example, all the way down here at the bottom um, is the characteristic vertebrae. And those are the backbones. And what that means is that everything in this cladogram that is beyond this characteristic has that trait, the trait of vertebra. So everything that we see that is past this point is going to have the characteristic of vertebrae. Now as we move up the cladogram in this direction, um, we're going to get more and more exclusive. In other words, we're going to start looking at different traits. And as we move up the cladogram, what we will find is that um, we're going to start excluding different organisms from what we're talking about. For example, uh, we said that all of the organisms in this group have vertebrae, but if we move to the next characteristic, the next characteristic is a bony skeleton. And that is going to exclude sharks. Sharks do not have a bony skeleton. They have a skeleton made of cartilage, and therefore they are excluded from all of the groups from here forward. And we can continue and move up the cladogram. And uh, the next characteristic that we have is four limbs. Now, what that means is that every organism from this point in the cladogram on is going to have four limbs, and every organism from this point in the cladogram back will not have four limbs. And so, obviously, um, amphibians, primates, uh, rodents, crocodiles, and birds all have um, four limbs. And obviously, or contra con uh, contrary to that, um, the fishes don't have limbs at all. And so they will not be included in the groups. And as we go up the cladogram, like I said, we're going to get more and more exclusive uh, with each trait. So, uh, for example, right here, the next trait is amniotic eggs. And so all the organisms from this point forward will uh, have amniotic eggs and all of the organisms from this point backward will not. Now what does this mean? Well what this means is that when we look at a cladogram even if we see organisms we may not be very familiar with uh, for example you might not realize that um, amphibians do not have eggs that have a shell. In other words, or, or for example, you may not know what an amniotic egg is, but by looking at this cladogram, you know that everything from this point in the cladogram forward has an amniotic egg, and everything from this point backwards does not. And so by looking at this cladogram, uh, you can tell that amphibians do not have amniotic eggs. If we, if we take them from their point and we trace them back to this primary line right here, uh, we can tell exactly where they fall in the uh, evolutionary lineage or the, the evolutionary system. Now the whole purpose of a cladogram is what it's going to do is it's going to show us which organisms are most closely related in terms of evolution. Um, and along different points on this cladogram, we have places where lines connect, and where those lines connect, that's going to be a very important thing. So, for example, um, let's look at the amphibians. 
and if we could trace them back to this major line, we find that they meet up with all the organisms at this point. And then let's say we look at a different organism. Let's say we look at um, crocodiles. Crocodiles are going to trace back to the cladogram at this point. Now, what we can, can see from this is that each of these places where lines connect is going to represent what we call a common ancestor. So if we look at any particular point, for example, right here, where we have these connections, this point right here represents the common ancestor of all organisms after this point. So this point that I've just highlighted right here is going to represent the common ancestor of amphibians, because we can trace them to this point. It's going to represent the common ancestor of primates, because we can trace them to this point. It's going to represent the common ancestor of rodents, because we can trace them to this point. It is also going to represent the common ancestor of crocodiles, because we can trace them to this point. And it will also represent the common ancestor of birds, because we can trace them to this point. So all of these organisms that can be traced to this single point are all going to have a common ancestor. In other words, there's going to be a species or organism that lived long ago that gave rise to, or eventually evolved into, all of these different forms. Now what you'll often see is that these um, various points will have be labeled. So maybe we call this first common ancestor A, and then we could say B, and then C, and then D, and then E. And if we wanted to ask a question, we might say, which of these letters represents the common ancestor of crocodiles and birds? And that one would be E, because that is where uh, the lineage of crocodiles and the lineage of birds converge with one another. Um, we might also ask ourselves, where is the common ancestor, uh, which point represents the common ancestor for amphibians and mammals, the primates and rodents, and we could say that that is at point C, because here is where amphibians meet in the evolutionary lineage, and then also this is where we could say the, uh, the mammals also meet at this point um, in the evolutionary lineage. And so uh, cladograms can tell us about common ancestry and exactly which organisms uh, evolved from common ancestors and at what point they did. Another thing that we can see from a cladogram is we can see how closely related two organisms are. Let's look for just a moment at the birds. If we wanted to ask ourselves, of these creatures that we have listed in this cladogram, which creature is most closely related to birds. In other words, which uh, creatures on here have the most recent common ancestor with birds? Um, we would say that would be the crocodiles. And the reason we say that is because they converge with the birds um, at a uh, closer point on the cladogram than any of these other organisms. The, the evolutionary distance, so to speak, between birds and crocodiles is much less than it is between, say, birds and rabbits. We would have to go much further back in time to find a common ancestor between birds and rabbits than we do to find a common ancestor between birds and crocodiles. So, in quick review, uh, a cladogram is just a diagram. A cladogram is just a diagram that shows evolutionary relationships. And the way it works is it arranges the organisms across the top. It shows you what the different groups of organisms are. And it gives you a drawing. This would be your evolutionary lineage, uh, this line moving up this way. And it shows you which organisms are most closely related to one another. It separates organisms by various characteristics. Uh, vertebrae, bony skeleton, four limbs, amniotic egg, um, etc., and those characteristics are going to help us to sort out and figure out which organisms are most closely related to each other and which are most distantly related to one another.